Hello everyone, welcome to part two of the mod spotlight for the rocket science mod. Uh, today I'm going to be mostly covering the fusion reactor. You can see it sitting here, hanging out, looking very cool. If I open the interface, you're going to say to yourself, whoa, what the heck is going on here? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of parts to this. It's not super crazy. It's definitely expensive, but it's a definitely a cool and interesting device. So why don't I get started on building it? And while I build it, I'll let that guy run and we'll come back to him later. All right, so what do we need to create a fusion reactor? Well, first we need the fusion reactor itself. Um, the first item you're going to need, and the items I'm going to craft here uh, will just be part of the mod, and uh, basically any items that are part of vanilla uh, industrial craft, I'll TMI over to myself. So I need some reactor chambers, eight of them to be exact. Yep, eight nuclear reactor chambers. You guys can look up on the wiki how to make these if you don't know how, or look at my nuclear uh, tutorial for industrial craft. And an advanced machine block. Gives us a fusion reactor. Very cool. So why don't we put him down right there. And I'm just going to give myself an MFSU. And I'll run some cable between them so that any energy that we send down the line will get in. Okay, so here's what an empty fusion reactor looks like. Um, there's these three slots here, there's a slot down here, all this stuff going on. Uh, a little confusing, but don't worry, it's not nearly as hard as it looks. Okay, um, so let's break this down into individual parts. Uh, the first thing we need here um, is this guy, conducting coils. There's actually two types that you can make, and I'll show you the two types here. Uh, I recommend using the gold version over the copper version because it's more efficient. Uh, and that's going to go in this bottom slot here. Um, the copper version I give myself some copper here is made like so. You take eight bars of copper to create a copper loop and you need eight copper loops to make your conducting coils. So that's a full stack of copper um, to make the item that goes in that bottom slot and that's copper coils. Again, you don't want to use these, but it is an option if you're low on resources otherwise, because the gold insulated ones are definitely more expensive. Um, but using this reduces the efficiency of the reactor by 30%. Uh, so that's a big amount, 33%, I think. Yeah, so good amount, don't want to use them. So let's skip those guys. And next I'm going to give you the way to make um, the gold version. You're going to need some coal dust, and you're going to need some redstone, and you're going to need some gold bars. So you need a full stack of each of these guys. And frankly, that's not terribly expensive um, to do what we need to do. Um, but you're going to actually need a lot more coal dust than that. So, because you need to make, you guessed it, carbon plates. And you need a full stack of carbon plates, so you need 64 of those. So I got eight, so I'm going to need eight more stacks of um, coal dust. Well, seven more on top of that. So you basically need eight stacks of coal in order to make the carbon plates that you need. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. And we get graphene gold lattice. So I got eight of those guys. And unfortunately, I can't put them in my singularity compressor because this is an add-on and it's not aware of the graphene gold lattice as being a uh, compressible item. So you're going to need to go stick it in a regular compressor and it's going to be nice and slow. But that's not too big a deal. And while that's running, why don't I just get some sleep? Much better. So how's this guy making out? He's giving us some superconductor material here. And I'm going to need eight of these guys. So I'm just going to skip ahead here, not wait for the compressor all day. And by putting eight of these superconducting materials in here, we get a superconductor loop. And just like with the copper version, we're going to need eight superconductor loops to get superconducting coils. And they go down here. So that's the first component you need. Awesome. The next thing we need to make is there's this part I'm not super clear on. It's not super well described in the um, in the section on how to build these in the add-on form section. So uh, why don't I just show you a couple of the items that you can make here. I'm going to need some of 
this. And one of these. Now the next three items are interchangeable as far as I could tell. Uh, this is an ohmic heating system. And the next one, I need an advanced circuit. A machine block. And some refined iron. And a copper cable. This is a neutral beam heating system. And then the last bit that I'm going to need here, I need a frequency transmitter, another machine block, and another advanced circuit. And like I said, I'm not 100% clear on what the difference is between these three items, um, but these three items can interchangeably be placed in your right sidebar here. Uh, they need energy to run, which I'll explain in a moment. And basically these guys build up heat within the fusion reactor. Uh, obviously there's no energy there. I don't know the pros or cons of the different items. You can put all three of one item, you can put two of one item, and one of the other. I'll be honest with you, I don't fully understand this aspect of it, but you can basically build any three of the items you want. They didn't look like they were that different. Apparently, um, from what it says on the forums, um, the different items have different properties about how quickly they heat up the fusion reactor. So it's something you'll want to play with and try and figure out on your own until I can figure out exactly what the differences are. So for now, I'll just, like I said, place them, each one separate in there. Okay. The next thing I'm going to need is a battery. And I'm going to just grab myself an empty battery and charge it up. And the reason you need a battery is because you need to kickstart this reaction with some energy. And one rechargeable battery is enough to get the, the ball rolling here. I'm not going to place that in just yet because we need one more component here, fuel. And how do we get fuel? Well, luckily, uh, we get it from water, which is cool. If you know anything about fusion, that's pretty accurate. You definitely uh, get fuel from water uh, for fusion. Unfortunately, you need a good amount of water and you need a good amount of materials here. So why don't I grab them real quick and I'll show you how to build this. Okay, so first, you need to make yourself an advanced machine block. Yep, another one of those guys. An extractor, an advanced circuit, some refined iron, and some redstone. And that'll get you the isotopic separator. And you need to hook this up to low voltage current. So you can see my LV transformer here. I hooked this guy up to low voltage current. Medium will cause it to explode. Um, and from there, you need some water cells. So why don't I just TMI myself some of those. This is where that wet vac that I showed in uh, part one of this uh, mod spotlight would come in handy. You're gonna need a good amount of water cells. Just place the whole stack in there. And what you're gonna wind up getting, why don't I lower my volume here in a second. What you're gonna wind up getting is one fuel cell for every 10 water cells. So you can see it's dumping empty cells in the bottom here, and you're getting an extraction rate. And once you get up to 10, you're going to get one fuel cell. So why don't I wait a moment for that, and I'll be back. Alright guys, I just let my isotropic separator here finish, and you can see that I've got 6 deuterium cells, 58 empty cells, and 40% uh, extraction resin remaining. So basically what happened is uh, 10 uh, sets of six, so 60 of these things converted into six deuterium cells, and there were four left over, so that's why we got the 40% there, and we get back our empty cells, which is very nice. So now we've got our deuterium cells, and we can go throw it over here in this reactor. So we just place uh, one here and one here, and you can see the fuel filled up. Now we can also leave some extra deuterium in here, and it'll keep going when it finishes the first cycle. And the last component here is the rechargeable battery. Placing that in here builds up your heat. And if we check our EU reader, which I believe is right here, we shouldn't be getting any energy units yet. That's correct. And once the heat fills up, um, what happens is the fuel starts running, and it starts producing energy. And the first bits of energy it produces are going to go into the rechargeable battery to charge it back up, which is very convenient and nice. And the last, uh, once that's all full, anything else is emitted at a rate of 30 energy units per tick, which is a pretty good amount of energy, really. I mean, that's a good amount. And what you're going to wind up getting from, um, you know, two deuterium cells, one on each side there, um, 
is 300,000 units of energy. So you can see here this MFSU as close to 600,000 um, because what happened is this guy um, recharged its rechargeable battery. Uh, so that, that's where like the difference comes from, the 6,000 or so. And I ran him twice, so he ran for two cycles. And he wound up producing 600,000. So that's 300,000 per cycle of deuterium cells. And also the nice thing is that um, once the uh, energy is running, if it continues for another cycle, so like as soon as this one finishes um, and the deuterium starts up another cycle, it maintains the heat from the last round, so it doesn't have to recharge this battery again or, or heat up. Um, but if you let it stop, like I did, uh, you can see it cooled off and it's no longer heated. So it'll have to recharge its heat again um, in the next cycle when I put more fuel in there. But if you were to put like a full stack of deuterium in here, you'd get a good amount of energy. Like I said, 300,000 from a set of two. And uh, it runs a good while. You can see this is pretty much your uh, progress. And 30 energy units per tick, not too shabby. So this wraps up how to use fusion reactors. Um, again, the um, wet dry vac will be very handy in getting water because you're going to need a good amount of water. Um, another suggestion is if you have Buildcraft and you want to get the Buildcraft bucket filler mod, go for it. And if you have, uh, you know, if you want to get pumps, that would also be a good idea. You can imagine some really cool contraptions here with Buildcraft if you just try keep trying to fill these guys. And uh, I think overall you're going to have fun with this mod. So again, this is the Rocket Science mod. Uh, this is part two of the mod spotlight. And uh, I'm going to wrap this up now. But before I do, I just want to mention to you guys, um, this is not all the mod's going to have. Um, there's quote unquote features to be implemented in 1.0, uh, are a new moon dimension accessible by rocket, oxygen mechanics, and an oxygen generator, uh, extraction of helium, or yeah, helium-3 from lunar soil, who knows what that's going to be used for, spacesuits, moon monsters, thermonuclear weapons, missile defense lasers, and multiplayer support. So that's what's coming up in version 1.0, according to the forum post. Um, it's currently on version 0.6, as mentioned here. And you can look in the description to find out where to get this guide. So, let's see, we're about 100,000 here. We're probably about a third of the way down. Yep. So, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed, and take it easy.